Oh no guys, I just finished the last dino and the numbers are pretty bad. Today, we're gonna do something that I alluded to in the last video, which is do a dyno test with this new intake manifold versus my stock intake manifold, and just kinda of see what the difference is. I honestly have no idea. I have some theories of what I think it might do. You guys could comment below what you think. But, um, I don't know, we'll see. I'm gonna put the stock intake back on after I fabricate an intake for this one. I don't have an intake pipe that fits, so I gotta make an intake pipe for the new intake manifold and then I'll be able to go back to back uh, the old one versus the new one. <clears throat> okay, so I was looking through my box of bends and piping and I don't have the right sizes to actually build another intake pipe. The mass airflow sensor requires a, it's like two and three quarters pipe approximately for the air to be correct going through the sensor so it doesn't change the stock calibration. That's why this is like massive here, massive here, kind of big here, and then they reduce the size right in the mass airflow sensor. That's to keep the air speed going through the sensor the same so it doesn't mess up the factory calibration. Just gives you more air volume in the pipe. Um, in order to try to do the two dynos back to back kind of similar, I think my best bet is to put the stock one on, pop this thing in here, uh, get a dyno, and then I'm probably gonna have to modify this one and stick it onto the new intake and do a dyno that way. Cause I wanna keep it to where it's reading through the same pipe so it's kinda similar. Uh, less variables is better. So basically, I'm gonna switch to the stock intake right now. We'll go do a couple of dynos back to back, get the car up to, good, like, to a certain temperature. Make sure I keep that consistent as well cause that does affect horsepower. Um, once I've got a good dyno pull on the stock, I will pull it off, probably just chop this a hair shorter so that it will fit here, and then we can put this uh, new intake manifold back on and get our final numbers and see what the difference is. Started from the mud, now you see us going up. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing up. People use the front, now you see them showing up. Show us up. I got the stock intake back on. It's not as exciting as my other one, but let's go do a dyno really quick and uh, get us a good baseline and we'll go ahead and change it out. I got the Z strapped onto the dyno with the uh, old intake manifold, the stock one. We're gonna make some completely stock poles. I'm gonna set up the dyno. I'm gonna put my laptop in the computer even though it doesn't have uprev on it yet. I can still data log the air temp and coolant temp. That way I can make this pole similar. Uh, when I switch over and do the next pole, I can get it up to the same temperatures and try to get as consistent as possible between the old intake manifold and the new one. got this cooled down a little bit to where I can take the bolts off it was super hot. Uh, I'm gonna pop this one off and pop the new intake on and then we'll make our next dyno pulls. This is pretty exciting. This is the part I've been waiting for all day. <laughs> Started from the mud, now you see us going up. Numbers never lie, now you see us blowing Take now that we got the manifold back on, is just to chop the angle down a little bit, slide it back into a different coupler and put it back into the cold air if I can and uh, plug it back in so it'll go through basically the same pipe. Okay, I only had to make one little cut and weld just to modify this to fit, but I think it looks pretty good. So we should be ready to go. Go ahead and uh, make our dyno poles right about now. Okay, we're all done and this is pretty much the result. Now, uh, let me explain, because it's, you know, kind of hard to just understand. So basically what I did was I 
wrote down the horsepower and torque from each pull. Uh, once I got it up to temperature, I made three pulls uh, with each intake manifold. Did the math, figured out my percentages, and uh, basically shakes down to something like this. Uh, we lost about 4% torque and about 6% horsepower. Uh, I'm not actually super surprised. Uh, most of the time when you go to a bigger plenum, you lose uh, mid or low range torque uh, simply because you don't have as fast of airspeed. So I gotta show you guys something though because the numbers don't really tell the whole story. Check this out. So if you'll notice here on the graph, um, obviously the worst portion of my loss is here in the middle, uh, about 4,500 RPM. It's just soft. Um, there's a pretty decent amount of loss there. Now, you know, that's surely just the intake manifold, I'm pretty confident. And if you come up a little bit farther, you'll notice something else happening. As we get farther out in this graph, uh, this number doesn't continue to fall as hard as the stock one does. So the stock one makes, you know, substantially more torque with faster airspeed with the smaller space. But then as we get to need more air when we get up higher and higher in the RPM, um, you can see this curve starting to flatten out and almost look like it's trending up slightly here. Now that's exactly what I built this manifold for. Check this out right here. The horsepower, same situation. Uh, you know, the worst of it's in the middle. And then, bam, right at the end, look at this massive ramp up. Almost like if we went another 500 RPM, um, this line you know, may continue or pass our factory line just a little bit farther out in the RPM. So, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but in the very beginning of this uh, actual uh, video, well, the video before, I mentioned that this manifold is designed for boost. Uh, it's designed not so much to catch the low end torque because when you have the turbo spooling at 4,000 RPM, you're gonna make such a massive amount of extra torque anyway, it's almost uncontrollable, so, a few horsepower, or a few torque, few horsepower in the middle right now is like a super small loss for what's going to be big long-term gains. So, all right, stay tuned. I, uh, I'm done for the day. I got to go home. But um, tomorrow I'm going to throw up rev on here and I'm going to clean the tune up. I'm going to use cam angle. I'm going to use, you know, air fuel ratio and timing and all the things I have in the software to take advantage of to get the horsepower and torque as close to back up to stock or maybe even supersede it with just tuning, which I believe I can probably do. And uh, then it will be kind of back to how it was. So we'll almost be back to square zero, but now we'll have an intake manifold that breathes substantially better on the top end. So when I go to put all that boost into it, as many PSI as I can freaking get in there, we should really see some gains. All right, I'm gonna see you guys in the morning. Okay, it's the next day. I purchased an uprev license. I'm gonna go ahead and install it on the 350Z and then start the tuning process and see what we can uh, make up uh, on the tune side of things. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this really quick and start making some pulls. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn on all the arc toggles because you know I gotta have some arc in my life. Um, might as well, you know? It's probably one of the best things ever done for this computer is those ARC features. Okay, now I basically have a stock tune file from Uprev with the ARC features turned on. Um, my ECU is completely stock as you can see right now. I've got a license and a pro license remaining, so I'm going to go ahead and at this point flash this ECU. Oh goodness, warning! You're about to make all the horsepower. Yes, I would like to go ahead and do that. Oop, here it goes. We are committed. Okay, I made the first pull. Uh, 205 horsepower and 200 torque. So we're down a little bit from the factory tune, but I mean, it's to be expected. Basically, we just need to do some tuning, so. I'm gonna start changing some stuff up on this next one, and uh, I'm hoping by the second or third pull we're we're back up a bit at least. So, all right, let's get to work. Okay, we just finished making the dyno poles on the Z. 
Uh, we are completed. We're all the way done. Uh, it's super, super hot. I didn't really want to beat on the car anymore. Uh, we were able to get the horsepower to 226, which is awesome. It's three horsepower more than the stock. That's all I care about anyway. Um, ultimately, we didn't design this manifold for, you know, all motor. It's, it's really just made to have a big plenum, lots of volume, so we could have a bunch of boosts in there uh, as we go forward with the project. Um, but in the meantime, I had this crazy thought. <laughs> I was thinking, where can I get a Turbo Z right now to test this on so we could like just make sure we have proof of concept with uh, the intake manifold helping with the boost. Um, and I thought about it for a minute, I thought, well shoot, we should just put it on Raven's car. You guys remember the Black Z with the hood exhaust? Um, I talked to him today and he said he's probably down to try, so next time I get a chance and a free day on the dyno, we're going to pull it in, switch the intake manifold, and see if he makes gains just off that change. That would be pretty interesting to see. So. All right, I think I'm gonna end this video here. Um, it's just a short one, but kind of fun to see the new project come together a little bit more. I'll see you guys in a couple days, hopefully, with some uh, new data information on an actual boosted car. All right, take it easy. See you next time.